working with my quantitative data, or the data where the numbers have physical meaning, I'm going to take a slightly different approach. And actually, it's going to calculate the frequency table and the histogram all at once, which is nice. So it's a one-shot deal. But I do have to think about it a little bit in advance. When we work with these quantitative variables, there's often categories that kind of naturally fall into place. Think about how you would divide the data up. And it does depend on what data you're looking at. But how would you describe weight? You probably wouldn't describe weight in three pound increments. You're probably not interested in how many dogs are zero to three pounds, then maybe four to seven pounds, then eight to ten pounds. We're interested maybe in breaking it up into five or ten pound increments. So we have to think about what is the natural way we would categorize things. And I am going to categorize it in ten pound increments. So 0 to 10 pounds, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40. Now Excel will create a histogram for you even if you don't make this decision, but it often is not a good histogram. It, it doesn't break it up into, into categories that have physical meaning. So over here I have put the boundaries for the weights. So 0 to 10 pounds is going to be my first category. And notice I did stop at 9.99 pounds because we don't want the categories to overlap. So I can't do 0 to 10, then 10 to 20. If a dog came in who weighed exactly 10 pounds, I wouldn't know where to put them. Do I put them in the first category or the second? So I did stop a little bit short. So I set up all my categories over here with the left-hand side of the boundary in one column and the right-hand side of the boundary in another. So the left hand, the zero, the, the smallest part of the boundary, it goes here, and the biggest part goes here. And you do want to make sure you cover all your data. I can't stop at 99.9, because .9, you can see over here, I do have one dog who came in who weighed 102.3. So I can't stop there. I would have left him short. So I had to go up and do that one last category. Now I'm going to make a histogram and a frequency table all in one shot. I'm going to choose that data analysis option. We talked about how to install it before. We're going to go to the data tab and choose data analysis. And a bunch of options come up, but I am making a histogram, so I'm going to choose that. And then I'm going to highlight. In the input range, I highlight, and you want to highlight just the numbers, not the, not the label on top. I'm going to highlight the numbers for the weight, because that's the column I'm interested in. For the bin range, I highlight only the top end, or the right-hand column for those boundaries I set up. I don't need to highlight the left-hand column. Excel actually only needs the upper end, but I, I did them both just to make sure I was straight. I want to make sure my labels box is not checked, and I want to make sure my chart output box is checked. That's what's going to tell it to make the graph. Then I hit OK. And you can see it made a very nice histogram. And over on the left is my frequency table. And over on the right is my graph. Now we could play around with this graph. Maybe I don't want it to be labeled bin on the bottom. Maybe I want it to be labeled weight. So I can edit that just by clicking on it and then putting your cursor in there. Histogram for animal weight. And the same thing, this is technically a bar chart because the bars don't touch. We talked before, you can click on the bars so they all have those little dots around them. And then we can format the data series and put the gap width down to zero. That's going to force the bars to touch. They just got real fat. I'm going to make my graph a little bit bigger so you can see it. And these will get copied and pasted over to Excel or over to Word just fine. You might want to put the borders in this cell. So I'm going to format the cells and put the outline and the inside borders in, just so it looks nice. And then I can copy them, and I could go over to my Word document and paste them. So there's my frequency table. And go back and grab my graph. There's my graph.